and have the S brackets. We've got the sum range. The sum range is going to be the P of X. Control shift down, shift up so we don't pick up the total. Control backspace back to the top. And then I'm going to say comma. We want the criteria range, which are the X's. So we're going to select the X at the top, control shift down, and then shift back to go back up to the top or shift up and then control backspace to go back to the top. And then comma, we want the criteria, the first criteria, it needs to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna put some quotes so I can put a greater than sign, end quote, and tie it together with an and. You need the and before you select that cell, which is the zero. And then comma, criteria two starts with the criteria range. We don't need to put in the sub range again, just the criteria range again, which are at the X's. So I'm gonna put my cursor at the top there, control shift down, shift up, control backspace to get back to the top, and then comma, and we want the second criteria less than or equal to the 400. So I'm gonna put quotes, and then so I can add the less than and an equal for less than or equal to, end quote, tie it together with an and, and then you can select the 400 and close this up. Let's see if it works. Enter. I'm going to go to the home tab, numbers, percentify, add some decimals. Looks great. I'd like to copy it down, but I need to make sure I absolute reference anything that needs absolute referencing. So I'm going to double click on it. This, these items over here, I need them to stay the same. So I'm going to select F4 here, dollar signs, F4 here, dollar signs, here too, F4. And then this one I do want to move down, the M, anything in column M, I want to move down relative, so I'll leave those as they are. This one, however, is over in G, I want it to be absolute, therefore F4 dollar sign before the G and the 2, and enter. Now I should be able to click on it and double click the fill handle, bringing it on down. So, so there you have it, and you can see... Uh, that we, we can compare these two things now, right? So now we have something that's actually comparable, whereas we didn't have it when we did it calorie by calorie, and you can see they're somewhat comparable. So, so now we're saying, okay, these line up and it looks like the bell curve might be a good thing to use. I'm gonna say Alt-Enter to, to sum this up. Home tab, uh, number, percentify, and there's our 100% about. Now I could also take these numbers and multiply it times my actual count to get an estimate of what Y count would be based on the actual bell curve uh, numbers. Or I can do the same thing and, and then add up all of the, all of the uh, frequencies that we did over here. So for example, I could do this. This is going to be the P of X uh, times, times, say, the count. That's not the times, times the count. And so I'm going to say now home tab, alignment, center, wrapping the text, black and white. Okay. And so actually we did this over here. This one, this is the one I was looking at, right? So we did the P of X times the count over here. But when we did that over here, we got counts that are going to be very small due to the fact that we're doing one calorie at a time. So we could do a formula similar to what we did over here on this column, right? Or I can basically repeat what we did here with these percentages, uh, and that's what we'll do on this one. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is gonna be the count, which equals the count, which was 457. That's our sample. If that's our sample count times, these are the percentages that we think are gonna be below zero up to zero based on our norm.dist calculation. So I'll pick that up and enter. So we'd have two there, double clicking on that. I'm going to make the total absolute, which is down at the bottom there. So I'm gonna say F4 dollar sign before the N and the 17, enter, and then double click to, to pick it up on down. So now we can compare our counts as well as you know the percentages. So this would be based on the bell curve. And so now we have this comparative data and you can see it's somewhat uh, comparative in nature now. So if I sum this up, alt equals, we're gonna get to that 457, of course, again.
And so now we can we can do something like compare our actual data to to the bell curve data that we have that we couldn't do before. You'll recall that this was our bell curve data, but because it was so fine in detail, we couldn't really plot our actual data on top of it. But now we've got these two things that line up pretty well. So if we wanted to plot them together, we could do so. So I could say something like uh, either the percents doesn't, I could do either the percents or the actual numbers. Let's do the uh, percents. So I'm gonna say, let's take the percents of the total. And then I'm gonna say insert and let's do a bar graph. So we'll say boom, bar graph. And there it is, I'll pull this to the side. I'll get rid of the total or the title. <laughs> and then I have to add our own X's, which should be these numbers. So I'm gonna click on it, chart design data. And let's go to the edit and then add our X's as is our general rule. So there we have it. And so that looks good.